from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi everybody, welcome to the special edition of the Cube Insights powered by ETR. Over the past several weeks, we've been running breaking analysis on various market segments, and today we're going to talk about the robotic process automation market. The spending data from ETR really shows that that market is poised for, for continued growth, it's been rocketing. These segments are independent editorial, uh, they are not sponsored in any way, although two of the companies that I'll be talking about today are uh, uh, the sponsors of the Cube, uh, Automation Anywhere and UiPath both sponsor the Cube. We we attend their shows, but they have absolutely no input over these editorial segments. It's 100% data driven, based on ETR data and Cube Insight opinions and my opinions. So thank you for watching. Let's get into it. So Alex, if you bring up the first slide, I want to share with people what the robotic process automation market is and what you need to know about it. It's a small but very fast growing market. According to a combination of Forrester and, and Gartner data, it's around one and a half to $1.7 billion this year. And it's growing at over 60% per year. Gartner calls it the fastest growing software sub-segment that they track. Gartner just put out a uh, magic quadrant uh, on this space, which was, you know, is always interesting reading, despite what you think about magic quadrants. Um, it's essentially software robots that are automating repetitive mundane tasks. And I underline tasks in this chart because it's largely tasks, simple tasks that are being automated in, in a big way, as opposed to really big complex processes. Uh, they tend to be targeted at line of business users. Um, and they're very popular in environments like finance and service roles and, and back office areas where there are are repetitive common tasks that people frankly hate. And we're going to give you some feedback from, from customers. There are a number of upstarts in this space, UiPath, Automation Anywhere, uh, uh, Blue Prism. These, these companies have attracted you know, massive influx of venture capital, particularly UiPath and Automation Anywhere, uh, over a billion and a half dollars in the last uh, couple of years. They have monster valuations. Take those three companies, their valuations are up over $10 billion uh, and growing. UiPath, for example, several months ago announced that it had more than $200 million in annual recurring revenue. They were just at $8 million two years ago. So you're seeing just this, this massive growth, a lot of influx of capital, and a lot of jockeying for position. Now users that we've talked to will uh, express a, a great deal of business impact related to uh, the introduction and application of RPA in their business. So I want you to take a look at this video of one practitioner that we interviewed uh, at a CUBE event. Let's listen to, to see what Gene Younger has to say and then we'll come back and talk about it. It's interesting because I also teach the Six Sigma courses there. And one of the, my slides I've had for years teaching that class is most business processes are like between 3.2 and 3.6, 3.8 sigma, which is like 95 to 98% accurate. Yeah. And I said, that's all the better we can usually do because of the expense that it would normally be to get us to a six sigma. You look at the places that have six sigma, it's life threatening, airline, you know, airplane engines, you hope they're at least seven sigma, you know, those type of things, but business processes, three, five, three, two. But now, I get to change that because with RPA, I can make them Six Sigma very cheap, very cheaply because I can pull them in, I got my bot, it comes over, pulls the information, and there's no double keying, there's no miss keys, it's accuracy, 100% accuracy. So this is a perfect example of how companies are applying robotic process automation to, to improve existing business processes. You would never try to get a, a, a standard business process up to Six Sigma, it's just not worth it. And as Jean Younger explained, now she can get there very inexpensively with RPA. There are many, many other use cases, but I wanted to share that one uh, with you. Now the next slide I'm going to show you comes from ETR. ETR is an organization that runs a panel, it's about a 4,500 user panel and they focus on spending intentions. They do periodic surveys throughout the year. 
Uh, they capture a fairly large number of users and what they're spending on. They've built this great taxonomy and we've been partnering with ETR to share with you some of that insight. So what this slide shows is really spending intentions from the July uh, uh, 2019 survey asking about the second half spending intentions on the sector of robotic process automation. You can see here the N is 1,068 respondents in that July survey. On the left hand side, you can see four vendors that we've chose to profile, UiPath, Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism, and Pegasystems, a company that's been around for a long time and is not exclusively focused on RPA. They've got more of a business process focus and I'll come back to that. But what this slide shows is really the spending intentions around four areas. The bright uh, red is we're going to leave the platform, stop spending, we're, we're out of here. The lighter red is we're going to spend less in the second half. The gray is uh, we're f flat. The dark green is we're going to increase spending and the lime green is we're a new customer coming on. So if you subtract the red from the green, you get what ETR calls the net score. And that is an indication of spending, intentions, and momentum. So the higher the net score, the better. You can see here UiPath leads the pack with an 81% net score. Ironically, that's the identical net score, uh, net score as was Snowflake in this survey. We profiled uh, the enterprise data warehouse market and Snowflake was one of the leaders there. So UiPath and Snowflake, even though they're sort of different markets and different levels of maturity, sort of around the same net score, so two very hot companies. And you can see, going down the list, Automation Anywhere 69%, Blue Prism 53%, and Pegasystems 44%. Um, actually, these are all very strong compared to some of the other market segments we track, like for instance, if you look at the disk array market and some of the legacy disk array companies, um, some of the enterprise data warehouse companies, you'll see sometimes negative scores. Now on the right hand side in the black you see shared accounts. What this says, this is the number of accounts that were mentioned as intending to spend on, or in the case of the, the dark red leave, or in the case of the bright green ad, but the number of accounts out of that 1,068 corpus of data that mentioned these respective companies. So you can see relatively small, you know, 68 for UiPath, 42 for Automation Anywhere, 45 for Blue Prism, and only 27 for Pegasystems. But these, I remind you, are still significantly, statistically significant, enough to at least get indications. So you can see again, you know, UiPath leads, but all of the companies are actually quite strong on a relative basis. So the next slide that I want to show you, Alex, if you bring this up, is a time series for some of these leading uh, competitors uh, over, over time. So we'll go back to uh, January of 18, and the number of, of shared accounts back then was relatively small. It was uh, in the low double digits, and in some cases, the single digits. But as we go to the right, you can start to see it. It increases in terms of the shared accounts out of that 1,000, 1,068 from this past survey. So you can see UiPath at that 81% net score, net score very high, uh, but, but also Automation Anywhere, very, very strong. Blue Prism, you can see the decline in that yellow line, but again, very, very strong with a 53% net, net score. So this space is, is new and it's, and it's very hot. I say it's new, I mean, it's been around for a while, but it's really starting to take off. Uh, and then you can see, see Pegasystems, uh, you're lower than these uh, other companies, but still very, very strong at, at 44%. Now I'll tell you, uh, the, the folks at Wikibon, the, the analyst uh, side of our house, have gone out, they've done some research, they, um, or, or maybe it was about 18 months ago, they, they downloaded UiPaths, uh, Community Edition, they tried to do the same for Automation Anywhere and Blue Prism. They tried to get uh, access to the software so they could you know, apply it and you know, run some robots uh, against some mundane tasks. They were only able to get the automation of the, sorry, the UiPath software, which was very simple to install and, and apply and you know, some simple task. They couldn't get the automation anywhere in Blue Prism. You had to go to resellers and it was sort of this complicated you know, setup. So that was sort of a red flag that, that we put up. But, but the UiPath you know, claims that their stuff is easy to use. Some of their uh, users that we've talked to, you know, talk about it in, in the context of low code. Um, and so we've, we've 
clarified some of that. We don't have as much data on Automation Anywhere and Blue Prism, although we've covered Automation Anywhere's events. Customers you know, seem quite happy and, and reporting strong business impacts. Don't have as much information at this time on Blue Prisms, on Blue Prism. We have uh, attended some of the uh, Pega Systems uh, uh, events just as observers. I was saying before I come back to them, they take more of a holistic approach to, to business process. Uh, uh, it's really not, they're not positioning themselves as a standalone RPA vendor, which you know, frankly I wouldn't do if I were up against UiPath and Automation Anywhere because they've got so much influx of capital, they've got modern platforms that are ostensibly easier to use. So Pegasystem seems to be uh, look going after RPA in a much sort of broader context around process, uh, um, uh, uh, business process engineering. So in summary, I just want to say, so the very fast growing market, there's a, but there's a lot of competition. You got UiPath, Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism, there's about 15 to 20 players in this space um, that are sort of sizable. It's a combination of, as they say, standalone robotic process automation players with integrated BPM players like Pegasystems. It's important to remember, you're largely here automating existing procedures and tasks. You know, you're not doing a lot of necessarily re-engineering. So that's, you know, some people are concerned about that, saying, okay, we're kind of paving the cart path. At the same time, uh, practitioners are reporting that it's having a major business impact. Uh, and, and although they've also said that's not likely to reduce headcount, rather we're redirecting resources. So you're not firing people because you're bringing in robots, so people aren't necessarily losing their jobs over this, they're just shifting away from that sort of undifferentiated heavy lifting that they hate doing, mundane tasks, automating that and moving on to more strategic items. There's a lot of discussion in the industry about artificial intelligence and, and machine learning, and some folks have said, well, AI and RPA, they have nothing to do with each other. I will say this, that, that that machine learning has been injected into the RPA space via computer vision, and a good example is to recognize a button like a send button. If you, you know, you're sending out you know, emails or pushing a certain button every day, at the, <laughs> you can automate that process. So computer vision is a key part of, of this, and again, it's something that certain uh, RPA vendors are touting. I know UiPath, again, talks about that a lot. Um, but the business impact is tangible, and this is based on customer feedback, a lot of customer feedback. You know, generally speaking, uh, you're seeing CFOs are hopping onto this, they're seeing this as a really good way to take out uh, some of the inefficiencies in their business, refocus people on uh, higher value activities, and so we're going to continue to watch this RPA space. I think it's going to be big. Uh, we see big SIs coming into this. We're talking about companies like Accenture, uh, IBM, uh, Deloitte, PwC, Ernie Young, those guys are starting to you know, go after the space. And I, I've always said this about uh, the, the big SIs. They love to eat at the trough. So if there's money there, they find it and they go hard after it. So thanks for watching everybody. We're, we're going to continue to report on this space. This is Dave Vellante with Cube Insights powered by ETR. We'll see you next time.